In the name of the one holy and undivided Trinity, amen. Please have a seat. We give this little booklet to all people who are about to be baptized. Or in this case, if they're just working on critical skills like how to hold up your own neck to their parents, we give this book. But in it, John Westerhoff recounts this story. I was in Argentina and went to worship one Sunday in a small parish church outside Buenos Aires. As I walked in a bit late, I witnessed a congregation on its knees singing a Good Friday hymn. Down the aisle came a father carrying a handmade child's coffin. His wife carried a pail of water from the family well. Behind them came the godparents carrying a naked baby in a serape. With tears in his eyes, the father put the coffin on the altar. The mother poured the water, and the godparents handed the child over to the priest. As the priest asked the parents and godparents the required questions, he put the oil used in the last rites of the church on the child's skin. He took the baby and, holding its nose, immersed the child in the coffin with the words, you are drowned in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. As he raised the child out of the water, the child cried out, as he probably had when he emerged from his mother's womb at his first birth. The priest held up the child and exclaimed, and you are resurrected, that you might love and serve the Lord. The congregation leaped up and began to sing an Easter hymn. The priest poured a perfumed oil over the child, and as he signed the baby with the cross, said, I now brand you as we do cattle on the range with the sign of the cross, so that the world will always know, and you will never be able to deny to whom you belong. The congregation broke into applause and came forward to offer the child the kiss of peace with the words, welcome, Juan Carlos Cristiana. No longer was the child to be known, as Juan Carlos Renosa. He had been adopted by and brought to life in a new family, the family called Christian. So the very first time I did baptism preparation with a new family in my first job, it was with a family who was pretty new to the Episcopal Church, and I had given them this booklet to read, and they came back to me for our first meeting. We're all settling in, and they're starting to look a little nervous. They clutch their little book and look at me and say, are, are we doing the thing with the coffin? <laughs> I said, no, we're not doing the thing with the coffin. It's going to be all right. It's just, everything is fine, um, which is not to say that I haven't been tempted. <laughs> it's pretty dramatic, right? It's good. It works. I'd like us to think for a minute about the stuff of this story, the actual physical, material stuff of it. There's a box made of wood. There's a bucket of water, a shawl, and some oil. In the reading from Isaiah, which interestingly we also read at funerals, the stuff in that is food, marrow, and wine. In the gospel reading today, the stuff is spices, 
oil, a stone, and a white robe. I find it wonderful that none of these objects in any of these glorious stories are rare or expensive. None of these things are found on only one place on earth. None of them are on display in museums. They're not only to be touched by bishops or priests or presidents or judges. Easter is this way. Being born into new life happens in the middle of our old life. We wear the same jeans. We ride the same bike. We drive the same car. We open the same box of cereal in the morning. We put on the same socks with the hole in the right big toe. We put a Band-Aid on our kid's elbow. We put some oil in the pan, we fry some eggs, we pour ourselves a glass of water before we go to bed, and we curl the same sheets around ourselves at night. We have the same diseases and the same frustrating relatives and the same irrational fears. It's all the same stuff. The difference is knowing that the simple tools of our daily life, oil and spices and water and clothes, are part of the grand story that God is telling about love at the very roots of the world. In the same way that the wood and oil, shawl and water, in Argentina became a serious story that altered the relationships between that one child and his community permanently. We use the butter knives and rain boots of our own lives to tell each other about God and about love. It's all normal stuff. And it's all sacred story. Easter happens in plain sight every day. My hope is that we can take what happens here, this feeling and this joy, the great reverence we have for this particular wood table, its cloth covering and the plates and cups we use, the bread and wine, and use it to see our own good lives with resurrected eyes, to handle our cutting boards and power drills and lipsticks, knowing that God is humming away just underneath all of it, to use them with the deep understanding that they have been blessed and that we use them to bless others. There is no Easter story that does not include us and the real things of our lives. The story of God is not over. It is not crystallized in the past. It is not frozen and locked away. The Alleluia dances between the atoms of the chains on the swing set and between the wheels on a wheelchair. It is sung between kindnesses, between co-workers on lunch break, and it is told in play between grandparents and grandchildren. We live in a redeemed world full of good, solid things, which we use to tell each other the story of our love. Each of us at some point, has come through the power of pain and lived to tell the tale. Each of us, in some way, has been drowned, and we are survived. 
and we choose again and again and again to stir holy spaghetti sauce with that one wood spoon, to sing each other songs. Easter is the feast day of that very normal sacred story happening all day. And we could not be more glad for it. Amen.